In this video, we explain the terms P and NP. Before we discuss P and NP, we need to understand the landscape of computational problems. Let us look at different types of computational problems. Function problems are defined by a function that maps each input to a set of feasible outputs. An interesting subclass of function problems are optimization problems. In an optimization problem, we want to find the best possible output among all feasible outputs. To do this, we need a quality measure that allows us to compare different feasible solutions. Here we see an area of feasible solutions. Each feasible solution has a quality. Sometimes computing the optimal solution can be difficult. In this case, it might help to search for a solution of a good enough quality. For instance, we might ask if there is a feasible solution with a quality of at least 6. Routing is a concrete example of an optimization problem. On your way to school, you probably want to minimize your commuting time. This optimization problem considers all feasible routes and selects the fastest one. The quality measure is the commuting time, which we want to minimize. But maybe you don't care about the absolute best route. All you want is a route that takes at most 20 minutes. Asking about a route that takes at most 20 minutes is not an optimization problem, but a decision problem. In a decision problem, the answer is always either true or false. There are many examples of decision problems. For example, is a given array sorted? Does a number x evenly divide y? Is x a prime number? For every optimization problem, we can ask a corresponding decision problem. In the decision version of a maximization problem, we choose a value k and ask if there exists a feasible output that has a quality of at least k. In the decision version of a minimization problem, we ask if there exists a solution that has quality at most k. If we can solve the optimization problem, then we can also solve the corresponding decision problem. All we need to do is check if the optimal solution has the desired quality. Similarly, if we solve the decision version of an optimization problem for different values of k, we can bound the value of an optimal solution. Suppose we know that there exists a route that gets us to school in less than 20 minutes and that no route can get us to school within 15 minutes. Then the optimal route must take us between 15 and 20 minutes. We are now ready to introduce P. The complexity class P is the subset of decision problems that we can solve in polynomial time. All our previous examples of decision problems are in P. To determine if an array is sorted we iterate over the array and compare neighboring elements. This algorithm takes linear time and is thus clearly polynomial in the size of the input. Also, the other two examples are solvable in polynomial time. One way of proving that a decision problem is in P is to simply provide a polynomial time algorithm. Another option is to show that problem A is not more difficult than problem B. This method is known as polynomial time reduction, or simply polynomial reduction. Suppose we have an algorithm that solves problem B. If we can solve problem A using a polynomial number of calls to algorithm B and polynomial additional time, then problem A is at most as difficult as problem B. We say that A reduces to B which is written as A less than or equal to B. If the algorithm that solves problem B runs in polynomial time and problem A is a decision problem, then the polynomial reduction gives us a polynomial time algorithm that solves problem A. Hence, in this case, the polynomial reduction proves that A is in P. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have an algorithm that lets us find the maximum element in an array. Then we can sort an array by repeatedly finding and removing the maximum of the array until no elements are left. Note that even if we can find the maximum of an array in polynomial time, sorting is not in P, because sorting is not a decision problem. Polynomial reductions are also transitive. Suppose problem A reduces to problem B, and problem B reduces to problem C. Then there is an algorithm that solves B using a solution to C and an algorithm that solves A using a solution to B. We can thus use the algorithm that solves B using C in the algorithm of A to get an algorithm that solves A using the solution to C. Let us look at another problem, the minimum vertex cover problem. Given a graph G, a vertex cover of G is a subset of the vertices, such that every edge is incident to at least one vertex in the subset. Can you pause the video and verify whether the set of red vertices forms a vertex cover? You probably noticed that the edge at the very bottom of the graph is not incident to a vertex in the subset. 
Thus, the marked vertices do not form a vertex cover. We need to add one of the two endpoints to make it a valid vertex cover. In the minimum vertex cover problem, we have to find a smallest vertex cover of a graph. The quality measure in this optimization problem is the number of vertices in the vertex cover. In the corresponding decision problem, we determine if a graph contains a vertex cover of size at most k. If you pause the video, are you able to find a vertex cover of size at most 4? You might have been able to find this vertex cover of size 4. But you probably noticed that finding it was not easy. So far, we do not know a polynomial time algorithm that solves this decision problem. On the other hand, once we showed you the vertex cover of size 4, it was probably easy to verify that it is indeed a valid vertex cover. This property of easily verifying a solution is so important that it has a name, NP. The set of all decision problems for which a solution is verifiable in polynomial time is known as the class NP. More formally, the class NP contains all decision problems, for which we can construct an algorithm that takes two arguments, a problem instance X and a certificate Y, runs in time polynomial in the size of the input, and outputs true if the answer of the decision problem is true and false otherwise. Often, the certificate is just a particular solution, and the algorithm verifies that the suggested solution is correct. We saw this for the vertex cover problem. If we give you a set of vertices, you can verify in polynomial time whether it is a valid vertex cover and has the correct size. There are a lot of decision problems that are in NP, meaning that for many decision problems, we can verify a solution in polynomial time. But for some decision problems, we also do not know how to verify a solution efficiently. For example, we do not know if it is possible to decide in polynomial time whether a chess player is going to win a chess position, assuming both players are playing optimally. So deciding whether a chess position is winning is probably not in NP. The two complexity classes, P and NP, are related. Complexity class P contains all decision problems that are solvable in polynomial time, and NP contains all decision problems that are verifiable in polynomial time. Notice that if we can solve a problem in polynomial time, then we can determine whether the answer to the decision problem is true or false in polynomial time, even without a certificate. Therefore, the complexity class P is a subset of NP. Let us look at some more problems in the complexity class NP. A subset of the vertices of a graph forms an independent set if no two of its vertices are connected by an edge. In the maximum independent set problem, our task is to find the largest independent set in a graph. As for vertex cover, the quality measure for the minimum independent set problem is the number of vertices in the set. Are you able to verify if the set of red vertices forms an independent set? Please pause the video. Indeed, the two marked vertices at the top are connected by an edge. Hence, the red vertices do not form an independent set. We need to remove one of the two vertices that are incident to the same edge to turn this set into an independent set. If we remove the left vertex, we can replace it with its neighbor to get an independent set of size 4. In the decision version of the independent set problem, we ask if a graph contains an independent set of size at least k. We do not know of a polynomial time algorithm that solves the independent set problem. But, if someone gives us a set of vertices, we can verify in polynomial time if the vertices form an independent set, and if it has a size of at least k. Therefore, the independent set problem is also in NP. There is another relation between independent set and vertex cover. We can find a polynomial time reduction from one to the other. Suppose we have found an independent set in a graph. Then, for the same graph, the complement of the vertices in the independent set forms a vertex cover, because for no edge in the graph can both endpoints be in the independent set. This polynomial reduction implies that if we know how to solve the independent set problem efficiently, we could also solve the vertex cover problem efficiently. The reduction also works the opposite way. If we have a vertex cover, then the complement of the vertices in the vertex cover forms an independent set. Because we can reduce the vertex cover problem to the independent set problem and vice versa, we know that they have the same difficulty. Another interesting graph problem is the maximum clique problem. A clique of a graph is a subset of the vertices that are all pairwise connected by an edge. In the maximum clique problem, we want to find the largest subset of vertices that form a clique within a graph. 
In the decision version of the maximum clique problem, we ask if a graph contains a clique of size at least k. If you pause the video, are you able to find a clique that is larger than the one displayed? You may have found this clique of size 4. Similarly to the vertex cover and independent set problem, finding a clique of a certain size is difficult and we do not know of a polynomial time algorithm. However, if someone gives us a set of vertices, we can determine in polynomial time if those vertices form a clique, by simply checking whether all the edges are present. Thus, maximum clique is another problem in NP. We can also reduce the maximum clique problem to the independent set problem. This reduction is a little more involved than the reduction from vertex cover to independent set. Given a graph G, the complement of G is a graph that has the same vertex set, and two vertices are connected, if they are not connected in G. The reduction from independent set to clique uses the complement graph. Given a clique in G, the same vertices form an independent set in the complement graph. The reason is that the vertices in a clique are pairwise connected. Hence, there is no edge between any pair of these vertices in the complement graph. This reduction also works the other way. If we have an independent set, then the same vertices form a clique in the complement graph. Let's quickly summarize what we learned in this video. We have introduced the complexity classes P and NP, both special cases of decision problems. P includes all decision problems that we can solve in polynomial time, and NP includes those where we can verify a solution in polynomial time. To relate the complexity of different problems, we learned the technique of polynomial reduction. Finally, we introduced the problems vertex cover, independent set, and clique. We showed that they are all in NP, and that they are reducible to each other. Thanks for watching this video.